All right, guys, we're live. Uh, I'll talk to you a little bit until some people show up. Once you show up, just just kind of uh, say hello, and um, I don't know. Tell me where you're at and how you're doing. I don't care. Um, let's just make this fun. Let's make it so it's not like uh, I don't know, like a cooking course or something. It's, it's definitely not a cooking course um, because. Uh, I'm just showing you how I make my stuff um, and just real quick if you if you are new to my channel um, and you're watching this replay because there's only one person on here right now uh, I have lost almost 180 pounds um, on the ketogenic diet uh, and, and it goes up and down it's not a perfect it's not a perfect gradual decline all the time for me um but it doesn't i don't go like too real high and then i lose weight and then i yo-yo i don't yo-yo it's just i i constantly go down but every now and then I, I might have a one or two pounds where i'll go up and then i'll go back down and i'll go up and i'll go back down but it's it's not like i'll lose 20 pounds and then um, hey Kelly, or is that Kathy? Oh, that's Kathy. Sorry. Uh, it's so small. I can't see it. Um, it's not like I, I lose 10 pounds and I gain 10 pounds or, or I lose 20 pounds and I gain 15 pounds. It's not like that. It's like a gradual decline. I'll, uh, I might gain a pound and I'll lose two or three over a couple days. And then I, I might gain another pound and gain, lose another pound the next day or something. Um, and if you do, it's just based on water, really. It's about it's about the amount of water that you retain because gaining a pound of fat is pretty impossible. Um, but anyway, on to the cooking. Today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do um, keto keto meatloaf, my version. We're gonna do um, uh, oven fried drumsticks, and I've got a, a special treat for for a quick breakfast as well. So it's going to be a, um, a little action, action pack today. And um, you can make any of this stuff and add or change any of the ingredients that I'm going to talk about. Hey, Roosevelt, or Rosa Alba. What a nice name. I like that name, Rosa Alba. Um, anyway, you can, you know, tweak it just any which way you want it to be. Um, Vicki Morgan is here, yay. All right, all right. And if you can, just hit a thumbs up before we get started. So um, I'm gonna give you different variations of some of this stuff. Some of this stuff is, is pretty um, normal. Uh, I don't think anybody's gonna be cooking along with me. I've seen some some of these shows where people cook along with the, uh, the person. Um, I, I just do so many different random things it's just, it's just hard um, for somebody to, to follow me. Um, it's probably one of these ones that you want to do, may, you want to try maybe later. Um, but what I will tell you is that everything I make is keto. All right? Everything. Like, I, I don't eat anything that's not keto. I don't have a cheat meal. I don't have a cheat day. I don't have a cheat snack. I don't have anything. I, because I I really don't want to cheat. I, I, I don't have the um, uh, the desire. Like, I like keto food. So, um, and I'm just going to show you how you can make food that your family will actually like. If they're not doing keto with you, they'll like this. Okay, they'll like this, except for maybe the, the chia seed thing I, I have over here. Uh, have you tried the... The hamburger buns from keto with real life people. Uh, no, I, I, I haven't, but um, I, I'd i be willing to try it, sure. Um, and sh Nancy's awesome. I think that's Nancy's channel, right? I think that's hers. She's awesome. I, I, I'm nothing but a big fan of hers. So, um, hey, from Chicago. I love Chicago. That's my town. Yeah, that's my, that's my hometown, guys. All right. Let's see, um, let me get a sip of my water. Let's go into meatloaf. First of all, you're gonna preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Already done. Then you're gonna take, I use about two pounds of hamburger, okay? Because what I do is I make my meatloaf 
and I kind of like it um, even the next day or the next two days, you know, uh, it, it, um, it's, it's fine. It's one of those things that I like it more the next day than I do almost the first day. So, um, and, and, and I could eat it cold or hot or whatever. It doesn't matter to me. Um, so I took 75% fat, or, um, lean. That's, that's pretty hard to find. Usually you can find it 80%, but you don't want to go with these 90, 93, 95% lean. You want more fat in, in your hamburger. All right. Uh, I do too. So throw it in the mixing bowl. Now, what I'm going to have is, um, this is one, if you can see it, one teaspoon of parsley, three quarters a teaspoon of Himalayan sea salt, half a teaspoon of garlic powder, and a quarter teaspoon of pepper. All right. And that's going to go in here too. Just sprinkle it on. We're going to mix all this in here anyway. All right. Then we're going to add half a cup. Is it half? Yeah. Half a cup of onions. All right. Just chopped up onions. That's it. Throw that in there. We're going to add, I have two eggs in here, beaten already. So I'm going to put half of that mixture, so one egg, in a different bowl. And you'll see why later. And I'll take the other half and I'll throw it into, into the mixing bowl with the, with the meat. Now, what I also do... I am going to add two tablespoons of barbecue sauce. Now the barbecue sauce that I use is right here, G Hughes. Okay, it's a sugar-free barbecue sauce. It's amazing. You won't you won't know it's it's not real barbecue sauce, or whatever, or maybe the other stuff is not real because it has so much sugar. So I just put two tablespoons of this in, right in. Okay. And I put a little bit of this. Now, if you want Worcestershire sauce, you can do that. But I use a liquid aminos. It's from Bragg's. Okay. Um, I just like that it has like a little soy sauce or a Worcestershire sauce flavor. Um, and I just use about one teaspoon or one tablespoon of that. Okay. So. Let me just, uh, you know what? Let me mix it with my hands. Oh, special ingredient right here. Now, first off, let me, let me tell you this real quick. If you don't like barbecue sauce, here's a ketchup that I found. Okay, this is classic t ketchup. Um, Altonera Sweets is the name of the company. This is a very keto ketchup. Okay, it's sweetened with stevia, just so you know. It is sweetened with stevia. It says so right here. It also says so on the back. Okay, uh, one gram of sugar, one sugar alcohol, uh, two grams. So if you are one of those people that cuts out the sugar and alcohol off it, it's one net carb for every um, uh, two tablespoons, I think is what it is. One tablespoon. All right. So that's an alternative, or you can use my favorite uh, sauce on most stuff is Rio's tomato sauce. This is a, a very good sauce to go with. Okay, if you haven't tried this stuff out, it is amazing. Okay, this sauce, oh, it's it's awesome. Okay, I, I don't get paid for any of this stuff, so it's not like. Um, uh, you know, it's like a commercial or anything. It's just good stuff to go with. All right. So we've already mixed all of our ingredients in here or put them in the bowl. So let's just mix them up. Yeah. 
Just mix it around. Try to get um, all the ingredients throughout the meat. Now, um, meatloaf will take about 55 minutes in the oven, about 55 minutes to an hour, depending on your oven, uh, at 350 degrees. So, we're just mixing it. Mix it pretty good. I don't add breadcrumbs and I don't add uh, any substitute for breadcrumbs in mine. I just kind of like it like this. Oh, I forgot the secret ingredient. My secret ingredient is a quarter cup of chopped jalapenos. This is a real, uh, this is a little hot one. Um, I get it right here. This is the one I got this time. That's it. Hot jalapeno. So I just dump that in. Yep. Mix it all around. Now, the jalapeno, if you bite into one, you're going to taste it. But for the most part, no, it doesn't. It doesn't overpower the meatloaf. It doesn't really, uh, it's not a big kick. But I guess if you uh, bite into one, it might, uh, might give you a little spice to your, to your, to your, to your palate. All right, so I have it all dished out. Now, what I'm gonna do is you could put it in basically like a little bread loaf, a meatloaf pan. Put it in any size pan you want. You could put it in little mini ones, which I'm gonna do, okay? I'm gonna put them in these little individual ones. But first, what I, what I do is, uh, let me grab my towel here. I do like to, even though these are non-stick, I like to put a little bit of olive oil in the pan. And I like to mix it around. So, and I'll just mix it from one. I just make sure I get the sides. And I just dump that into the next one. I have four of them here. So, plus the big one. And, in case I need some uh, overflow. But um, to me, I, I just like them to be able to come out of the pan easily. I hate fighting with a meatloaf to get it out of a pan because it always falls apart on me. Now, if you happen to be making it for a dinner that, like this evening or, or any time you decide to make it, um, you have to, once it's out of the oven, you let it sit for about hmm, 10 minutes and it, it'll actually, it'll actually be better. All right, let me go ahead and start divvying this up and putting my little, basically my meatballs here into my loaf pans, my little mini loaf pans. Um, I hope everybody's doing good. I hope everybody's keto is going well. I will answer some keto questions um, after all this is over with. So if you have a question on keto and you could stick to the end, you could ask it then. Um, somebody just popped in to say hello. Hello. I could not. I just barely saw it and it went pops off and my hands are all dirty. Um, all right. I think Vicky just said she makes meatloaf that way or some way or something like that.
Usually this comes out pretty good to um, four, four loaves, but it depends on the amount of burger that you use. And in this case, I'm pretty close, just about on, you know. Yeah, it's, it's pretty good. Now I packed it into the corners. I, I really pushed it into the form. Um, really squished it down. So here's what they look like. Just little meatloafs in, in these little bitty pans. Um, and then what I will do, let me rinse off my hand. Okay, I will take that other egg that we have here that we stuck in, in the bowl, okay? And my little brushy brush, this little brush here. And I will go ahead and brush on a pretty good amount of egg on top of my meatloafs. Um, I like that it, it makes a little more golden brown on the top. It kind of hardens it up um, because I'm also, I'll tell you in a second. Um, while I'm doing this, in case some of you guys want to know, uh, I am speaking at a Adapt Your Life seminar in North Carolina, in Roxboro, North Carolina, on s Saturday the 22nd of this month, down in North Carolina. It's an Adapt Your Life seminar with Dr. Eric Westman, and I get to speak at it, which is kind of cool. All right, one more to do. And we're just mixing, we're just smearing on this uh, egg, egg, whipped up egg. That's all. Now I take the rest of that egg, I'm not gonna waste it. I'm gonna pour it on my, on each one. Okay, and I'll let it move around a little bit. It'll fill in all the little cracks and corners. Okay, that's kind of how it looks right here. Oops. Anyway, that's how it looks. Okay, and then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pour a little bit of my barbecue sauce on it. All right. I will spoon it out, put it in a small bowl, and then I'll just spoon it out. I don't like, I don't want to get too much barbecue sauce on it. And I just kind of put a, a streak right down the middle because it will spread out while it's cooking. And that's it. That's Gonzo's meatloaf right there. So, I'll go ahead and put these in the oven. Okay, I guess you guys can see that. All right, let me just go ahead and put them in there. You can watch me every day. I wouldn't subject you to that. I thought I started this. Maybe I didn't. I know I pushed uh, bake, but I 
or uh, yeah, bake, but I don't think I push start. Um, Alexa, set alarm for one hour. Oh, that's Echo, sorry. Echo, set alarm for one hour. One hour, starting now. Okay. All right, so let's move to the other side of the island. And this one is the drummies. Uh, barbecue drumsticks. Not barbecue, sorry. Oven fried drumsticks. All right. Now, what I do, now this might be a little different than a lot of you guys, okay? Um, <laughs> that's funny. Um, I'm, I kind of soak mine in my drumsticks in heavy whipping cream, depending on the size of the bowl, depending on how big your drumsticks are. I soak them in that, okay, along with uh, two tablespoons of melted butter. And I, and I let them sit in this, and I move them around, I'll shift them around. This is kind of what they, they're just sitting in a bowl, okay? And they're just drumsticks like this, okay? And that's it. They're sitting in heavy whipping cream with, uh, with butter. So, and then what I'll do is I will now take my ingredients. This is a half teaspoon of salt, half teaspoon of garlic powder, half, quarter teaspoon of pepper, and a half teaspoon of parsley. All right, I take that, throw it in my freezer bag, okay? Now, I have Caribbean jerk chicken. Like I said, you can make whatever seasonings you want. I use Caribbean jerk chicken, okay? I'm also gonna mix that in there. And a quarter cup of Parmesan. I throw that in here, okay? I mix it around. Okay, like so. Then I'm gonna put each of these legs, legs in there. I'm gonna make sure I get a lot of um, um, heavy whipping cream on them first. I'll roll them around and I'll just toss them in here. I'll do two, two and three at a time. I'll do three the first time. and I'll Because I have five of them here. So I'll do, um, I will do, sorry, I will do three of them first. Let me just shake that up. You know what? Yeah. You know what? I might just stick all five of them in here because I want to make sure they all get a good seasoning in there. Let me just roll it around in the mixture first. Uh, this heavy whipping cream and butter smells really, really good. It smells really good. Okay. Zip that up. I just do this so that I can get a, a pretty even coat on them. Remember that old shake and bake? Do they still have shake and bake? I don't know. I remember as a kid, I used to love doing the, the shake and bake part for my mom. I used to watch her cook. All right, I'm just gonna flatten that out now and set it, to, set it aside, all right? Now, let me get rid of this. And what I do now, I take a bag of pork rinds, okay? And this will be your crispy coating, and you just crush them down. You don't have to even pop the top. You could just crush them down and crush them and crush them and crush them and crush them until they are powdery, like, 
Like you're li it's like therapeutic almost. You just keep crushing it. I have windows, so we'll watch later. Oh, okay. You just keep crushing it down, okay? Just do a little powder stuff. Then I will open up a second freezer bag and put that in there. Okay. I will also take one more tablespoon of Caribbean jerk seasoning. I will throw that in there because I like my crispy coating to have a little season to it. Get that shut. Mix it around. It looks pretty mixed. Okay, let me smell it. See how it smells. Mmm, it's pretty good. I can still smell the pork rind, but I also smell the Caribbean jerk seasoning. All right, now, you know what? I might just add a little bit more of the Parmesan into my, my, my uh, bag. Because I like a little Parmesan on the outside too. Just, I just eyeball that. I don't know, maybe a tablespoon, maybe a little bit more. But I'll mix that in there. Now, if you guys saw my video um, a couple weeks ago, I bought this little contraption. Okay. I found this and I was like, what is that? And what it is, is you take your drumsticks you insert them and slide them around like on a carousel and, and they just hang in here, okay? And then I just put this in the pan and just put it in the oven, okay? Again, this is 350 degrees, but this is only gonna go in for about 25 minutes and maybe 25 to 30 minutes. It just means the oven's finally heated up, all right? so. Let's go ahead and season these drum, or not season, but bread these drummies. All right. I'm just going to do them all at the same time. So I'm going to take one of these, throw them in. Okay. Throw it in. And I'm kind of rolling them around in the seasoning, making sure that all that seasoning gets used up on these guys because I really want them seasoned. I like it. I like it when they're seasoned. All right, throw that in there. Throw this in here. You know what? I might even throw the rest of it. Whatever crumblies I could get out of this bag. Well, they're not even coming out, really. Some of them are. Now, zip that up. Wipe my hands off. And, do your shake and bake part of this. Now some people like to, they'll dip it in an egg and they'll dip it in flour and then they'll dip it in their breading. Um, this is all I do. I stick them in my own um, ketogenic buttermilk kind of concoction, which would be, uh, I just made it myself. I guess you can make your own. Um, but I just, came, just did mine with heavy whipping cream and butter, like I said. Okay. Let's see how they look. All right. So here is one. Okay. That's how they come out. Now I'll go ahead and I'll stick it in the little carousel thing. And I will twist him around. Get 
get the next one out. Just to show you it wasn't a fluke. There it is, well breaded. Uh, just making sure I get get them all rolled around in this breading. I like it to be really extra crispy. And these drumsticks are kind of big on the big side, so which is good. Basically, this recipe um, made, I would think, almost a family size portion of these, which is good. All right, set that aside. So, there it is again. Okay. Now they're hanging on this little thing, just like that. Okay, that's it. They're not gonna stick and you're gonna leave half your seasoning stuck to the bottom of the pan or anything like that. So um, I'm just gonna take this now and stick this in the oven with the, with the glass pan underneath. shift my uh, meatloafs around. Just shifted them around here. Hold on a second. Had to move the uh, oven rack down a little bit because the uh, the carousel was a little too tall for where I had the uh, one oven uh, rack. Hope you guys can hear me. All right. So I had to shift the uh, right down. Okay, so those are going to cook. Echo, set timer for 25 minutes. Second timer, 25 minutes. Starting All right, now. I've got a huge mess here. But the other thing I'm gonna show you real quick, and I think I still have some people here, is an alternative to eggs and bacon and stuff in the morning, um, you can do something like this. Let me get my measuring spoon out. Um, what, I, what I do is I take chia seeds, okay? Just chia seeds here. And I'm going to mix, because each tablespoon of chia seeds is 60 calories, okay? Not that I really care, 
but uh, all three of them would be about 13, maybe 14 grams of fat. Okay, so, uh, and about nine to 10 grams of protein, 15 grams of fiber, stuff like that. So, you could take two or three, depending on, on your allotment of, of um, carbs, all right? The, uh, the idea of it though, is that it is, it'll say five total carbs and five dietary fiber. So if you reduce your fiber off of your total carbs, you're looking at net zero, okay? So it's net zero carbs per serving on this, on just the chia seeds. On the milk, or the uh, almond milk that I'm gonna use, it's also one gram, this is the kind that I use, toasted almond coconut milk, okay? Um, it's one total carb minus one, one fiber. So it's, the whole thing is minus. Now, what I do is I will put in to a jar, one either this size, or one that size. So what I would suggest is if you have a bulletproof coffee in the morning, go with the smaller one. Or if you have a hungrier appetite, go with the bigger one. Okay, that's all. And I pour the milk in first. I pour it in just a little bit lower than the top. There's Bernie, he's finally talking. And from there, if you notice, this is what I've done to all four. I poured that in, okay? Now I take two tablespoons of chia seed and I'll sprinkle them right on top of each one, okay? Two tablespoons chia seeds. Chia seeds will give you uh, a omega-3 fat that your body really needs and really loves. So I sprinkle two into each bowl, into each cup. It doesn't even matter that the ones are small, smaller. I still just put two in them. I just like to do it that way. All right. Now, the key to this is that you have to mix them up. So, because they will just sit there in a big clump if you don't. So, just take the time, stir them up, and I'll make a few of these. All right, that's, that's stirred up. See how it is? All right, that's one. I'll take the next one and stir that up. Yes, Bert, I hear you, buddy. Yeah. Making up for lost time, huh? Now, once you stir them up once, I suggest that you go and stir them up a second time. And then I will show you what else I do to these things. Let me stir them up a second time. Make sure I don't feel any clumps in them. Although I kind of like the clumps. They're kind of chewy. I don't know. I'm weird like that, I guess. All right. So once you think that they're pretty well mixed, okay, you're gonna get some at the bottom. Don't worry about it. Take out your measuring spoon. I do a half in the big ones. And I, what I'm talking about is this. I'll use like an extract, strawberry, raspberry extract. And I'll pour that in Half a teaspoon for the big ones, raspberry. I'll pour a, a half a teaspoon because I kind of like them sweet. And then a quarter of a teaspoon in the smaller ones. All right. And then I will take my little mini mason jars, tighten the lid. I hear you, bud. And 
And then I will take these little guys and shake them up. Let me just tighten them all up here real quick. Now, what you'll do then is you'll stick them in the fridge and they will, the, the chia seeds, uh-oh, I'm stuck. I'm stuck. Am I still here, guys? Sorry about that. Um, I don't know what went wrong. How is it now? Am I back? <sighs> I think so. Let me just stick it back in the, in the thing. Sorry about that. Uh, YouTube just has a mind of its own. Is anybody here still? Hopefully. It says I have six people. Nine thumbs up. Anybody still here? Let me look. Let me wait and see what's going on. Oh, there we are. Barbara's here. Hi, Barbara. Thanks for hanging in there. Um, were you watching when it froze? Just curious. I'm not sure at what point did it freeze and um, you guys didn't see. All right. Um, at what point was I with these? that, that um, it froze. Did I already mix in um, the extract? I, I didn't notice it until I looked over and I was like, hey, um, oh, shake them, then what? That was it, that was when it froze. Um, so that was it, good. So you just shake them up. And I, I tend to, like, sometimes I'll stick to the bottom, like that, okay? And I will just bang them off the countertop, mix them around, um, make sure that even upside down they're not sticking. And then every so often, I'll go to the fridge, and I'll just shake them up, okay? Or I'll sit them in the fridge upside down for a little bit, and then I'll and I'll flip them back around, you know, flip them, alternating flipping them. So now I'll stick them in the fridge. Kind of wait 24 hours for them all right it takes about 24 hours for um for the chia seed the shell on it to crack open once it cracks open it'll absorb a lot of that um coconut milk okay um it'll absorb a lot of that coconut milk and it'll it'll swell up so it tastes like almost like a pudding or maybe not quite like a yogurt, but it's very, it's a very good uh, breakfast treat in the morning. So I have that plus a couple of hard boiled eggs. I always have these hard boiled eggs in my fridge because you just never know. I like eggs. I think, you know, all your proteins are based off of eggs, off the protein in an egg. So it's very, um, it's, it's almost a perfect protein. So I will take two of these eggs, hard boiled, throw a little salt on them, and one of those cups of uh, chia seeds, and that's my breakfast. Uh, maybe I'll have um, bulletproof coffee. I don't know. It just depends. So um, do we have any questions on this whole, this whole thing? The... Um, do we have questions on keto? Do we have questions on the meatloaf? Do we have questions on the chia seed pudding? Do we have questions on the oven fried drummies? Any questions?
Um, any questions on where I've been for the last week and a half? Um, my dog, my dog passed away and, and, um, I just didn't feel like coming on. I didn't. Um, and he's cremated now. I'll be right back. I get my dog. There's my dog. This is Ollie. You guys remember he had cancer, so we had him cremated. Um, this was actually a, uh, my wife and I's first dog together. We had him for, gosh, a long time. 11, 11 years or more. So, yeah, he was a good dog. But he was supposed to be about five or six when we got him. And he lived for another 11 years with us. So, for a lab to live 15, 16 years with cancer, I think that's pretty good. So, that's Ollie now. He sits next to me in the living room uh, on a shelf with our cat. Uh, we always cremate our pets. I, I, I don't know why. My, it's my wife's thing, so I just go along with it. So, um, do we have any questions about anything? Um, no matter what it is, ask away. Uh, the seminar in North Carolina, if anybody's actually going to go to that. Um, besides me here. Um, if, you, if you are planning on going to that, I hope you are. I'd like to meet some of my people that are on my channel someday. Um, I just, everybody's just so far spread out. I've got some in Canada, some in, you know, almost all the different states. I've got people in Australia, um, you know, Chicago, Florida, East Coast, West Coast. Post the recipe for the meatloaf, please. So sorry about your fur, baby. Um, I kind of, I don't usually post just a recipe. I just kind of, I want people to watch the video because there's more to my recipe than just, um, the ingredients. Does that make sense? It's not hard. Um, it's just, it was, what was it? Two pounds of meatloaf, half a cup of onion, um, a quarter cup of jalapenos, uh, one egg, um, a little bit of a liquid aminos splashed in, um, my barbecue sauce, my teaspoon of parsley, my three quarter teaspoon of salt, my half teaspoon of garlic powder, and my quarter teaspoon of pepper. And then I mix it all together and I put it in a pan. Um, yeah, Katie, it, it, it's good. And they're in the oven baking right now. They won't be done for a while. Um, the chia seeds are in the refrigerator. The uh, drummies are crisping up in the, in the oven. They're going to be in there for about 20, 25 minutes, or 25 minutes to 30 minutes at 350 degrees. The meatloafs are in there at 350 degrees for about 55 minutes to an hour. I'd say an hour because my oven was not preheated, even though I thought it was. Just not. And then what I did was I put uh, this barbecue sauce on it. You can put, traditionally, people put ketchup on their meatloaf. Well, there's this ketchup, which I recommend. And there is this Rayo's tomato sauce. Depending on what you, what you can get and what you like on it. Um, when I was a kid, my mom used to put cream of chicken, cream of chicken over our meatloaf. And that was awesome too. Come to Oregon. Oh, I would love to. If I think if I came to Oregon, I wouldn't want to leave. It's so beautiful there. Yeah. Is it rainy though? I hear it's rainy. It's rainy here right now too. 
Anyway, Caribbean jerk. Can you, can you show that? Oh, yeah, the Caribbean jerk. I just use McCormick's. It's just this right here. That's all. It's a mix of spices. I'm never gonna be able to read this. Um, one of the spices in this in the McCormick's are sugar, but there's so little of it in there. I, I don't really care. It's not that big a deal. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, and then it was just the breading is just pork rind with a little bit of that Caribbean jerk in it. Now you could use different pork rinds. Sometimes you could use what I have some left of. These are barbecue, hot, hot and spicy barbecue, like a, um, a pork rind. Hot and spicy. I like spicy. I store it. I store all my stuff in these little things. Once they're open, they're in there. So, anybody else have any questions? I start my fast tomorrow. I think. I think I might start it Tuesday. I'm gonna start it Tuesday. Yeah, and I might go for five to seven days, depending on how long. But I will go for an extended fast. Yes, it is no rain for months. Oh, it is beautiful, but no rain for months. Huh, imagine that. I have some beautiful scenery pictures of Oregon that I'm going to paint. Have you guys seen my paintings? I, I got back into painting and I did two paintings. Does anybody want to see them? If you want to see them, I'll, I'll go get them. They're right in the other room. Um, just hit a one for yes and two for no. Shut up. We don't want to see your paintings. Let me know. If I get a couple ones, I'll, I'll go get them. And you don't have to look at them. It's not criteria. But you should have a one or a two, so I know people are listening. Are we still there? Is anybody there? Hello? Hello? There's 13 people here. Nobody's saying a word. Am I still live? Love them. Oh, Katie saw them already. Thank you, Katie. I'm just getting back into painting though. Um, so, um, like, it's surprising how much, how much skill, um, hi, Alimo, uh, how much skill that um, you lose over time by not painting for a while, or I guess it, it's, Depending on um, depending on any kind of thing that you do, hi Linda, um, like a, any kind of craft or any kind of art that you do, if you don't do a lot of practice to it, you kind of lose a little bit of it. Now, hopefully it's just temporarily lost. Um, I'll grab those paintings, make you guys look at them anyway. Here's the one, make you guys look at it. This is, uh, that's Jack, Sally, and Zero. They're from um, uh, Burton's Nightmare Before Christmas show. Okay, that's good. That's the one. And this is, the other one is Alice in Wonderland. And this is Alice in Wonderland. 
It's a little bit of uh, my version of Alice in Wonderland with the Chester cat right there as the moon. His smile is the moon. There's the little rabbit with his little watch. And there's there's uh, Snow White. Not Snow White. What am I thinking? Um, Alice. Yeah. Yeah. So I've got others, but um, I'm kind of going to do a couple like that, but I'm going to, I'm going to slowly get into real life. And what I want is I want my paintings to one day look like um, a photograph. I want, I want to be able to look at something and be able to paint it exactly the way I see it. Um, and it takes time because I wasn't even at that level the last time. I used to paint a lot of murals um, in people's homes on their on their walls. Um, I got published in Country Living Magazine one time on a Christmas special edition or something. Um, so I painted a lot back in the day, but I gave it up for a long time. So, yeah. So anybody got any questions? If you are not subscribed, please subscribe. Going Gonzo Keto Diet. Um, if you're going to North Carolina, I hope to see you there. It's Adapt Your Life uh, seminar. Um, if you can share this video, oh, our chicken should be done. Echo, echo, cancel second alarm. Oh. Echo, echo, cancel second alarm. How much time is left in first alarm? Echo, how much time is in the first alarm? Your alarm is not set. Oh, she canceled them both. Alexa, or Echo, set alarm for 30 minutes. Second timer, 30 minutes, starting now. See, second timer. There is no timer, but now it's second time. Ugh. All right, let me look at the chicken. Yeah. I'm gonna let it sit there for another five minutes. It's, it's one thing to eat uh, meatloaf undercooked, but not chicken. I, I'll let it cook in there for a little bit longer. But they look good. They look really good. Anybody got any questions? Hopefully I paint something else this week. I'm really enjoying the painting this week. Um, just curious. Hmm. Hope everybody's having a good day. Ali Mo, what are you eating? That Ali Mo's eating, she said. So really I've heard from Barbara and Linda. Um, and Katie, Ali Mo, who else have I heard from? I, I need to go back. And you guys know, I'll go back and answer all these questions and um, try to, if there are questions. Let me pull the chicken out so you guys can at least see that and see how it looks. This is the chicken so far. Doesn't look much different, really. That's it, but it's crisping up. So I'm gonna let it sit in there a little bit more. Meatloafs are coming out really good too. So um, what I'll do is I'll post a, a picture on the YouTube, on the uh, Facebook page and show you how they turned out. Um, but other than that, this has been about an hour now. We're at 59 minutes and 50, nine seconds one minute right there, or one hour right there all right guys i want to thank uh those of you that stuck it out and stayed with me 
Um, if you have any questions or concerns, give me a give me a message on my Facebook. That's always the best way to ask me a question. Um, if even if it's not just too personal, but I, I don't always see all the alerts. I don't because there's so many different ways that people are trying to contact me. The quickest and easiest one is is um, through Facebook, I, Instant Messenger. So if you have a question or a concern, I do try to uh, look up um, comments and stuff that I'm attached to, so I try to go to them. Um, no matter what the question is, it, it doesn't matter because I, I, I do this to help everybody. I, I, I do this to help people that are just starting keto, people that are stuck, plateaued, people that are enjoying keto, um, people that just want to talk. Um, you guys know I, I'm a huge advocate for the PTSD, which is why the color for the hat and the warrior shirt. The warrior shirt is is uh, done with the um, the logo of of PTSD awareness. So, um, and it's not just veterans. You guys have talked with me. You guys know um, PTSD is is pretty big. It's it's not it's not something small. It's not something that just goes away um, just by ignoring it. Uh, the ketogenic diet helps with the neurological part, helps to feed the brain properly, um, and of course, talking with friends and talking with professionals and stuff like that will actually help with PTSD too. PTSD leads to a lot of different things. It leads to um, depression, anxiety, um, suicide. So we have to make sure that we're helping as many people with PTSD as we can. And PTSD, it's not just some veteran with it, okay? PTSD can be from a car accident. It could be from uh, a, an abusive relationship. It could be um, from witnessing something or being, or being the, the victim, okay? It, it comes in so many different ways. It just depends on you and how your your brain handles the situation. And it doesn't mean you're weak and it doesn't mean it doesn't mean anything bad. It just means that you need a little bit of help whether it's through your nutrition, whether it's through a friend, whether it's through counseling or whether whatever it is. But keto the keto diet, the low carb diet, the high fat part of that is definitely going to help with the neurological part of PTSD, with depression, with anxiety, um, you know, a lot of our uh, weight problems and eating disorders and, and stuff like that come from depression, come from um, PTSD, and, and a lot of us don't even realize it. So um, I just want everybody to understand that and be aware of it, and I will see you guys the next time I do a live. Hopefully it's not past a week from now. But um, keep following me, keep supporting me, keep watching my channel, keep subscribing, keep uh, suggesting me to other channels. I have, I bet, almost 200 videos now uh, based on keto that, that can help people. Um, I hope, I think it's about 200. There's a lot of videos. And it takes a lot of work to make a lot of videos. It really does. But... There are a lot of videos out there to help you, um, and uh, I'm always here too, so let me know. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know how your recipes turn out if you try them, and we'll see you guys later. All right, guys, bye now. Bye, Linda. What kind of cheese do I need again? Parmesan. Message me on Facebook if you need me. Bye, Alimo.